West Highlands of Scotland are amongst the least inhabited parts of the British Isles. Consequently, railways came late to the mountains, and the story of how they reached the remote parts of Argyll is the stuff of legends. The centenary might never have happened. The West Highland Railway has never been a particularly profitable line, and its finances have been subjected to scrutiny like few others. Its nadir came in 1963, when British Railway's Beeching Report proposed closure of a large part of the British Railway system, including the West Highland. At this time, it was in transition from a steam-operated line to a diesel one, but its infrastructure was virtually unchanged from its opening. These scenes show the line during the 1950s and 60s when it was carrying some of its heaviest ever traffic, necessitating the double heading of many trains. This was the result of its severe gradient profile, which includes long stretches of climbs at up to 1 in 50, which tax the locomotives to the limit. One victim of the beaching proposals was the withdrawal of the local service to Arica and Tarbert, which saw the use of North British locomotives until the late 1950s. From its inception, the West Highland was worked by the North British Railway, which absorbed it in 1908 and was then amalgamated itself into the London and North Eastern Railway in 1923. Thus, locomotives and rolling stock reflected that heritage. The North British initially used small and then larger 440 locomotives for passenger trains, the latter named after Scottish Glens, until the LNER introduced the K2 moguls, which had originally been designed for the Great Northern Railway. These were named in the North British tradition after Scottish locks and continued to see use alongside later machines until the demise of steam.